Hi and welcome to Rob's Camino yet again. Uh, I thought I'd come outside for a change and uh, if, you're if you're wondering what's behind me, this is my uh, little sanctuary in our backyard. So um, I've got a couple of mementos that I bought in um, Santiago and I've got my little yellow arrow and I, and I cross there and um, this is sometimes a place where I just come and sit and reflect and it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Camino. If you're wondering what that building is, it's the old outhouse. So this week we are going to be talking about the bed race. What is it and how to avoid it? Coming right up. Okay, so if you've um, been following or planning your Camino and looking at social media and forums and things like that, you may well have heard of the bed race. And you might be wondering, what is it and how do we avoid it? Well, the bed race happens on the more popular Caminos and typically on the Camino Frances, which is the one that uh, starts in Saint-Jean and goes across northwest Spain. Uh, I think it can happen on the Portuguese, but mainly you hear about it happening on the Camino Frances. And generally what people are referring to is that it seems to be a race to get to the, your destination point to find a bed. Um, and it's particularly for people staying in albergues. If you're not sure of the accommodation types, I'll cover that in another video. But basically you can stay in albergues, bed and breakfast hotels or whatever. Albergues are the hostels where it's, you know, communal uh, dormitory type style accommodation. Uh, it's very popular. People love those. Uh, but I, again, I'll talk in the future about uh, different accommodation options. So why does the bed race occur? Well, during... Um, you know, high peak times on the Camino, which generally are between are the months of May and September uh, at the moment. Uh, what happens is that there's a lot of competition for beds um, and people start to get worried that when they get to the albergue, they won't get a bed because a lot of the albergues you can't book. So you basically have to arrive, you have to queue up and it's first in, you know, we say in Australia, first in best dressed. Uh, you might say, you know, first in best served or first in first served. So basically you queue up or you put your, your packs in a line in the order that you arrive and then people are checked into the albergue when it opens in that sequence. So if you're not you know, one of the first few to arrive, you, you perhaps won't have a good choice of bed. Uh, if you're a bit late to arrive, you might not get a bed. That's what people worry about and hence the bed race. And so what can happen is that people are getting up ridiculously early and leaving the albergue early in the morning to race to their destination point to make sure they can get into the queue early and get a bed in the next albergue. Well, what a waste of time and effort that is. That's really not at all what the Camino should be about. So let's talk about how to avoid that bed race because you really don't want to get involved in all of that, those sort of mental games. You want to relax and enjoy your albergue enjoy your Camino rather. Okay, so why does it occur? What can happen uh, in, in very popular periods during the Camino is that you get waves of pilgrims. So I'm just looking at these mosquitoes around the camera. They love to bite me. You get waves of pilgrims building up. So you can imagine they're all starting from one town in the morning and they're probably going to another you know, similar town. And so this wave or slug of pilgrims is going along the Camino and they're all going to arrive in the next town looking for accommodation. Um, one of the reasons for that is that people very often follow guidebooks. And here's a page from one of the really popular guidebooks from John Brealey's guidebooks. And you can see he's broken it down into stages. And this one, we're walking from Puente Lorena to Estella, to else, Estella. Um, and what happens is a lot of people treat this guidebook as that's the way you have to walk it. And they'll walk from Puente Lorena to Estella. Um, and lots of people do that. And so you get this mass of people all heading to the same town because it's the end point of the stage. So first thing to get into your head is there are no stages. The only reason in the guidebook they're shown as stages is that you can't fit the whole thing on one map and you have to break it up. And so why not break it up into about a day's worth of walking? And so that's what most of the guidebooks are like. Each, each map on, the, on these pages is about a day's worth of walking. Doesn't mean you have to walk that stage at all. And in fact, you shouldn't. So for example, if you want to avoid the waves and avoid the bed races, what you might do is you'll have a look at this as you're planning. Monero is a lovely place to stay. Siraki, beautiful little hilltop town. Um, Orca, 
uh, Lorca, that one, uh, Via Tuerta. All of these are perfectly good places to stay and they all have different accommodation. So this one's got an albergo here, this one's got a number of albergos. Um, so first trick to avoid the bed race is to get out of the wave of pilgrims and stay at the intermediate places. They're very often much nicer. Um, I've got another map here. So this one, for example, is showing a stage from Los Arcos to Logroño. Uh, and that is about 28.6 k's. A lot of people will walk that stage. I don't. For a start, it's a bit too long for me at 28 k's. Uh, and so I break it up. And a lovely place to stay here is Bianna. It's a beautiful old town. Um, so I break up the journey. I'll, I'll, I might stay there. Uh, once I've stayed in Logroño, a lovely place, great for tapas. Uh, or I'll stay in Bianna and then I'll go through Logroño. I'll stop for lunch and I'll stop at a smaller place the other side of Logroño. So that's a really easy way to get out of the bed race. Don't stop in the most popular places. And very often... Uh, these smaller places are far nicer places to stay anyway. So that's one way to get out of it. Um, the other way is to book ahead. Now, depending, uh, so that takes a whole stress of worrying about where you're going to sleep away. So with a lot of the albergues, you can't book. Uh, some of them you can. Uh, some of the albergues will let you book private rooms. Uh, you can stay, of course, in bed and breakfast and hotels. So a lot of that is going to be dependent on the type of accommodation you're going to stay in. But that's an option. You could book ahead. Then you know you've got the bed. You don't have to race. You could start late in the morning. Very often I start well after everybody else. You know, if people are dashing out the door at six and seven o'clock, some mornings I start at nine. And I've almost got the trail to myself. It's great. Uh, and I'm not rushing because generally I've booked that next night ahead. So I'll do another video about that whole process of booking because what you shouldn't do is to book the whole lot ahead. I'll explain why in a future video. But you know, booking one or two nights ahead can work quite well. So book ahead, that's another way. Um, and another way, finally, oh, I'm getting chewed up by these mosquitoes. Another way to um, get out of this whole bed race thing is to drop out of the wave. So depending where you start and the number of people that started on the same day as you, you might have just hit a peak day. Maybe it was a particular holiday or just after a holiday and a big mass of people happened to start on the same day as you in the same place. Walk a short day, maybe. Just walk 10, 15 k's that day. Let that big wave of pilgrims get ahead of you. Uh, maybe if you want to, walk a longer day, get ahead of them. But it's about getting out of that wave sequence. And... You know, you might hear, you might talk to some people along the way and say, oh, isn't it terrible? We're rushing to get a bed. And you're saying, no, not me. It's because they're in the middle of the wave. They're staying in the major end of stage towns and they're leaving, you know, at the same time as everybody else. So there's a number of ways to, to avoid that bed race. So let's just recap on those. Uh, don't stay at the obvious end of stage places. And remember, there are no stages, but it's just laid down in a people think there are because they're laid that way in the guidebooks. Uh, stay at the intermediate places. Uh, maybe uh, go walk a little bit longer or a bit shorter or take a day off and let the wave get beyond you. Uh, or depending on the type of accommodation, maybe think about booking ahead and just take all of that stress away. So that's what the bed race is. That's how to avoid it. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any uh, questions or comments or anything on that, do comment below. I'd love to see the comments and I'll see you next time, which might be next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.